Good evening. Queensland is staring down the barrel of a worsening COVID emergency. Tonight we have 13 new community cases of Delta. Our strictest lockdown yet is being extended. Buying time to test, trace and isolate tens of thousands of Queenslanders across an exploding list of hotspots. So the coronavirus is back. We are in another lockdown through to Sunday. Unfortunately, it hasn't really affected the reselling business or the YouTube channel, which is pleasing. But uh, if you are new to the channel, I sell mainly on eBay. I'm a full-time reseller, and I also post three videos on this YouTube channel every single week. So I am certainly really busy, but it is actually one year now that I've been a full-time reseller and YouTuber. I quit my job 12 months ago to pursue something that I always wanted to do, and that is just give something a go for myself and, and run this YouTube channel as well and to see what I can make of it. But there are some negative aspects to that, and I wanted to highlight the negative aspects of quitting a nine to five job to pursue something and work for yourself. So we're gonna break down those a little bit later on in the video, but uh, we are gonna do what we always do on a Tuesday morning first up, and that is grab the overnight sales. There were a few, so let's go get them. Now, you might have remembered in my trip to the thrift video, I bought two board games last Thursday. The first one was Santorini. This was behind the counter. I've paid just $6 for this. It's gone on to sell for $65 in the space of about three days. So a really quick mover. Uh, very happy to get the result there off a $6 purchase. Brand new and sealed, which is always what I like to do with my board games. And then the other one as well was the logo board game. I've sold this one about four or five times now. Whenever I find it, it's a guaranteed money maker. Sells incredibly fast. No different here, $32.50. So look guys, I think with the coronavirus that's going on at the moment, board games are actually a really good category to get into. Uh, a lot of people trapped inside and they just want something to do. So board games are selling pretty well for me. Um, quick $80 made in the space of about four days off my trip to the thrift. Have a look at all of these DVDs. I have so many, but we've had a couple more sell. We've got Speed. That one sold for $10, the special edition. Uh, a great movie. I've seen it a number of times, so no doubt that was always going to sell quick. And then the other one I found was Good Night and Good Luck. This had Robert Downey Jr. in it, George Clooney. Hadn't heard of it, hadn't seen it, but uh, again, another $10 sale on this one. So the DVDs are constantly moving for me. Um, I'm always listing them up for a minimum of $10 or more. And uh, yeah, a couple of cheap $10 ones have been able to move overnight. Now, I don't have a ton of video games, but I did get one to sell, which was Final Fantasy 13. So this one sold for $18.95. I would have only paid a couple of dollars for it in the thrift. Take off $4.50 track postage and a few fees. I've probably made about 10 bucks on this one. Uh, probably need to pay, place a bit more of a focus though on sourcing more video games. But uh, that was a decent one. Not the best ever video game I've sold, but um, at least another one out the door. The next one I actually don't have with me. It was this Zoo York jacket. So this was a double XL, just a plain brown hooded jacket. Um, look, the Zoo York brand isn't the greatest brand to be finding. I think you get it in Kmart and Target now. I used to buy it myself personally from uh, City Beach back in the day, but um, this one's got on sale for $35. I only paid $3 for it in the thrift. So there was always gonna be a few dollars made on it, but 35 bucks, it ended up costing me $12 to ship it off. Um, the bloke was a FIFO worker that bought it and he sent me a note in his uh, purchase saying that if I could get it out to him ASAP, uh, that'd be very much appreciated because he wanted to get it for his next swing. So hopefully by getting it out to him within two hours of him purchasing it yesterday, uh, he'll be able to get that before his next roster and uh, wear it while he's out on the job. And then the last sale that we had yesterday was, you guessed it, a pair of shoes. Uh, now these were the Adidas NMDs, which I've sold a number of before. They're these ones down here. Um, so these actually, I was happy to sell these because they were only a US size six. They're a men's pair of running shoes, no laces, as you can see there. The condition of them are pretty good. They ended up selling for $45. So took a best offer on these. Would normally have tried to get about 50, so I was happy to take 45. But being a US size six, I don't typically sell smaller sizes too quickly. Um, so to be able to get that one done, I was, I was pretty happy with. Well, if that doesn't look like a lockdown worth of sales, I don't know what does. We've got some media and some board games, basically. Remember, the Zoo York jacket was a part of this as well. Seven items have gone on to sell, which is my daily average, but uh, the revenue was $228. And I'm normally doing about 280 bucks. So a little bit down in revenue, but uh, still nonetheless, happy to get things still ticking over pretty nicely on my eBay store.
this video is talking about the five worst things of working for yourself. But what I will say is that I absolutely love working for myself. And over the last year, being able to become a full-time reseller, a full-time YouTuber, it has been a lot of fun. But like any job that you have out there, there's gonna be certain things that you enjoy about your job and then others that you don't. So I've had a bit of a think about that. And definitely the first thing that I wanted to have a chat about is the fact that you are a jack of all trades. In my past experience, I've always worked in the sales industry or in a sales role within these sporting teams that I've, I've previously worked for. And I really liked that role because it was just a single-minded focus. So I just needed to bring in revenue, make a bunch of phone calls, have a bunch of meetings and close sales. And I felt that I really enjoyed that process of the simplicity. I just knew what I had to do. The numbers were there. I knew whether I was doing well or I wasn't doing well. And that was it. There was no real stress or pressure as long as I was hitting my numbers. When reselling and YouTube comes into it and now you're working for yourself and you're a one-man band, you have a lot of different hats on. If you think about it, as a reselling YouTuber, I need to be an accountant or a bookkeeper with all of my numbers. I need to be a videographer and editor for my YouTube videos. I just need to be a general administrator across responding to comments on my YouTube channel and then all of the administration aspects to running an eBay business online. I need to be the customer service person as well. I need to be a presenter for this YouTube channel. I need to be a marketing and advertiser uh, as well for all the promotion of what I'm doing to try and get myself seen by as many people as possible. I need to be a delivery driver when I go and drop off my furniture on Facebook Marketplace. And I also need to be a photographer to make sure my listings are great on eBay. So that was just 10 different job titles that I could sort of pick out of what I do on a daily basis that I really have never had to battle with before. So that's been a real stress and, and a real pressure on me to make sure that my time management is going, I guess, effectively to make sure that I get the job done, where it was just a whole lot more simplified in, in previous roles. So when you're first starting out and you're first working for yourself, you have to be a jack of all trades. It doesn't matter whether you like the job or not, you need to do it all. And hopefully down the line, you can get into a place where you know people start to work for you. You can you know move away things that you don't enjoy so much and give that to other people to focus focus on. But in those first couple of years working for yourself, you have to do it all. And that can be very daunting. Hello guys. Have a good one guys. The next one kind of, uh, I guess, carries on from the first topic of being a jack of all trade. It's, it's the feeling that you never have time off or you never can have time off. Even if I give myself a day off, I'm always thinking about what I need to do next. I'm always feeling a little bit guilty for taking time off and that gets really draining as well. Just the, the, the mental aspect of thinking you need to do more. Uh, whenever I take any time off, I'm always just thinking about the next task that I need to do. Like I said, we've got so many different jobs we've got to get done and when you are just a one man band, you really don't feel like you can take a lot of time away. So I've grappled with that for the last year. I've spoken about it quite a bit on this channel as well. But even a year into the game, I've still got that battle on my hands of how do I actually enjoy taking time off when that time comes. So I'm working on efficiencies and processes to be able to do that, but it's definitely one of the worst things. It's, there's nothing worse than having a weekend and not being able to enjoy it, just simply be based on your mindset. Um, I really wanna try and work on that, and I just think for anyone that's doing it for the first time, trying to work for yourself, you're gonna run into that mental, uh, I guess, battle. And um, the quicker you can get yourself out of it, I think the better you'll be. Okay, no worries. So one thing that I've really grappled with is the fact that you get uh, regular updates of YouTube analytics and your eBay sales dashboard all the time, like instant updates. So yeah, your analytics, for those of you who don't know with YouTube, is every 30 seconds there's an update of new viewership, new subscribers right there in front of you all the time. And same with eBay, you get a best offer pop up on your phone at any point in time, you'll get a customer service message pop up as well. These apps are all consuming, especially with what I'm doing in the, in the working for myself environment that I'm doing. And, and I'm finding that that's a real battle as well because I can't really ever switch off. If I wanna work an eight hour day, I've got all of this information still bombarding me first thing in the morning and, and then late at night as well. So there's never a point in time where I can actually just get away from it. So I think what I need to do moving forward is maybe delete the app off my phone, get rid of YouTube, get rid of eBay and only look at it in the morning at night and get my work done during the day because I can lapse into these really bad procrastination periods of just looking at those numbers that literally don't get me anywhere. They don't serve a purpose and they either make me feel really good or they make me feel really bad and neither is a good thing to be in in a normal work day. So I need to stop doing that and I think that's going to be, I think for anyone that does eBay and for anyone that does YouTube out there, you can probably relate to that one and I don't think it's a healthy thing to be doing. Try and do it just in the morning and at night.
I should just quickly say too, this is how I do my board games and uh, anything that's a bit of a strange object. Rather than putting it in a box, I just go and put some butcher's paper and cover it up. So I'll cover this up in butcher's paper, this board game, and then I'll wrap it up in bubble wrap. And uh, that generally gets there without any damage on it whatsoever. And I just whack a label on top of that uh, and send it off that way. So no one knows what it is and it's packaged up and secured safely. So one of the biggest things that I really do miss from my nine to five was the awesome people that I got to work with. It was a huge plus to know that I was going into a workplace where I had a bunch of mates and um, you really do get close to those guys and uh, it does make work a whole lot more fun. And uh, for the last year, I've just simply not experienced that. I'm working in this single spare bedroom all by myself, no one else around me. I know exactly what I've got to do, but there is no one else to have a chat to about it. So that's been really tough. It's been a whole year of doing that. I'm an extrovert sort of a personality, so it has been a real battle for me. If you're an introvert yourself, you might be able to get through it a little bit easier, but um, certainly it's something that sat with me for quite a while. I know that down the line, though, things will change. I'll be able to hire a few people. I'm thinking of getting a video editor for some YouTube videos that I've got coming up, and uh, I also want to get somebody in to do the admin side of things like posting and, and listing my items. So even just a couple of people around the place uh, every now and again would certainly help the process, but uh, it's just something for the, for the last year I've dealt with. I know that it'll probably be another few months uh, like this as well, but um, hopefully just a short-term pain for a long-term gain um, with what I've got you know, planned in place for the future. So um, if, you, if you're just starting out, just expect that it's going to be quite some time where you're going to lose that support network of your normal nine-to-five workplace. And is that actually even something that you want to put up with? Because I certainly do miss those guys. But I think all of these points that I've, I've spoken about today really kind of hone in on this one point, which causes all the stress of the others. And that is, you're never guaranteed any form of income. It's always based on how hard you work. I've got this overriding feeling that the minute I stop, it stops. So I'm always trying to be on the go because if I'm not, I'm not going to be earning the money. And that's a huge stress. It can be really rewarding to know that whatever you do on a Monday to Friday, nine to five, you're going to get a paycheck. Whether you like that paycheck or not, it's going to come in on a weekly, fortnightly or monthly basis. And that is really reassuring. When you're doing this by yourself and you're trying to make any dollar you can, you feel like you've got to work super, super hard. And the returns are generally not as much as they would be in that original nine to five job that you had. So very, very early days, you've really got to expect that you're going to be working a whole lot more to what you're actually getting paid. And you've kind of got to sift through that for a fair while before things start to pick up. Really the beauty of what we're doing here, if you can persist through these initial years, there really is an uncapped earning potential in reselling and in YouTube. And there are two areas that I'm going to continue to focus on. And while I'll be doing a lot of hours in the early days and I won't be earning a lot of money, I really do believe that over the next couple of years, things will change and that will start to pay back. And, uh, and I'll be able to get the reward for all the hard work that I've been doing in the meantime. But just not having that guaranteed paycheck on a weekly basis, if you're not great with your cash flow and you don't have a good budget set in place for yourself personally and on the business side of things, you really could start to break away and fall down with what you're trying to do. So that would be the absolute worst thing, not having a reassurance of a regular paycheck. But it's, if it's something you can persist with and get through, you're generally going to do all right. Thank you very much. No problem, man. Have a great day. Appreciate it. So I really don't want this video to deter you from giving something a go for yourself and, and giving something that you've wanted to do for a really long time a crack because I think really the good will always outweigh the bad when you get to do something that you really want to be doing. And I certainly absolutely love everything that I've done over the last year and I wouldn't regret it for the world. I've certainly grown a lot over the last year. I've learned so many different things that I, I never truly would have had the chance to do had I been working just a normal nine to five job. So um, definitely go out there and attack what you want to attack and, and just expect that there are going to be some things that you're not necessarily going to enjoy. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different style of video. It's still a Tuesday vlog, but definitely something a little bit different, that's for sure. Uh, I'll leave you with a video right here. Uh, it'll be one of my favorite trips of the thrift videos and, and hopefully you enjoy that one. Uh, keep tuning in, guys. I do appreciate the support. We'll see you soon.